Hello, and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to draw the ray diagram for a concave mirror. Now, in this particular class, we're only interested in mirrors that are parts of circles, or flat. In class, I'll provide you a nice little drafting tool to help you draw mirrors that are circles, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use a compass. So we're going to begin by drawing a, a circular mirror using my compass. like so. So there's my circular mirror and the compass left a nice little dot right where the center of the mirror is. Note that for mirrors the center is the geometric center of the circle whereas for lenses the center is is the middle part. So it's a slight difference in terminology. Now I'm going to go in and draw my optical axis which connects the center of the mirror and goes outwards. And you're going to really need a protractor to do all of this stuff. So I've got my center. I um, need to measure how big my circle actually is. And I can see from measuring it that my center is 9.2 centimeters away. And by the sign conventions discussed in the last chapter, since this is a concave mirror, we're going to think of our center or our radius as being positive. Now, a fundamental property of all spherical mirrors is that the focal length is half of the radius. That's generally true for spherical mirrors. So in this case, the focal length is going to be 9.2 over 2. Everything's positive here, which is uh, 4.6 centimeters. So I can take my little uh, protractor here and measure 4.6 centimeters away from the, the center of the mirror. Mark a little point, and that will be my focal point, a positive 4.6 centimeters. Now all we need is an object, so we're going to place our object for this example uh, nice and, and far outside our center, so it's going to be outside the center of curvature. Place it kind of um, out here somewhere. And uh, I'll make an object that's going to have some, some height to it. So I'm actually going to make it as tall as my protractor for a reason, that this part, for a reason that will become hopefully apparent in a moment. So there's my object. Again, we like to put a little arrow on it so we know which way is up. But you can think of it as being a face or a tree or a candle, whatever you want. Arrows are just easy to draw. Now remember there are photons coming off of this object in all directions and we're just going to choose the three photons that are easiest for us to follow. So the nice thing about this is it's the same three rays that we've been doing for lenses just have to think about it maybe a little bit differently. So the first ray just as for a lens is in parallel, out using the focal point. So that's your first ray. So we're going to draw our first ray coming in parallel. Now you can see why I've made my object the exact same thickness as my uh, protractor because it makes drawing a parallel ray pretty easy. So it's going to come in parallel like that. And it's going to then go out through my focal point. Just like so. And you can see if you zoom in on this over here, why does it do that? 
a good old law of reflection, the incoming angle and the outgoing angle are the same. Ray number two. Rays that go through the center travel straight. You'll notice the phrasing of how we describe our rays. It's exactly the same for mirrors and lenses. But now the center is here, not here. This is the vertex where the optical axis meets the optical element, right? That's the vertex. The center is here. So an array that goes through the center will travel in a straight line. So use my protractor to make sure all my lines are nice and straight. And it'll, so that ray will come in, hit the mirror, and end up bouncing to travel straight back outwards. You can see that such a ray meets the mirror at 90 degrees. So it bounces straight in and back out. So that is ray number two. Let me pull this other one. Is ray number one. And then ray number three, again, same procedure as with the lens. In using the focal point, out parallel. Now, lenses have two focal points, one on each side, but mirrors only only got the one, so we don't have to worry about which focal point to use. A mirror's only got one, so that makes it maybe a little bit easier. So we're going to come in using our focal point, like so. Think about that ray. It comes in using the focal point, and that thing is going to go out parallel to our optical axis like this and you'll see that all of these rays actually converge at this point right in front of the mirror that is where our image is going to be right there so we're going to have an image distance that's positive because it's on the side of the outgoing light. Thing with mirrors is that the incoming side and the outgoing side are the same side of the mirror. So we're going to have a positive image distance. We have a positive object distance. That's where our image is going to be. Uh, in the previous chapter, we discussed looking in the inside of a spoon at some length, and we mentioned that the image appears to hover in front of the spoon a little bit. Here that image is. We'll talk a little bit more exactly about why this is the image, how to, you know, how to characterize that image, how to interpret this diagram. We'll do that in class. I'm just sort of giving you a you know, sneak preview of where we're going to go in class. What I really need you to know for right now is how to draw these three rays. That concludes this video.